Welcome back to WCCF Tech TV everyone. This is Keith again and today we're taking a look at the performance of Mass Effect Andromeda on the PC across various graphics cards. Now let's just go ahead and knock out the test bench out right here out of the way real quick. We're using the 6800K at 4.1 gigahertz with the ASUS X99A-2 motherboard with 32 gigabytes of Corsair Vengeance LPX DDR4 2666 RAM and well as a full list of graphics cards that'll be on the screen shortly but first we want to talk about how we tested this game we did pick a portion of the game because there's no built-in benchmark right after you take over your first ship and you land on your first planet luckily there's a nice area to start on top of a hill as and work your way down down, following these tracks and coming around by a building and then jumping over and looking off into the distance. I felt this was a good spot to test because there are quite a bit of weather effects here. It's not quite as flashy as the earlier parts in the game, but it does have weather effects. Um, the draw distance is quite large. There's water. It so far has given a pretty fair representation of the performance that I've seen coming up to this point in the game. So. With all of that out of the way, let's take a look at the performance numbers starting with 1080p. Again, we tested this game on the high preset. We didn't go to ultra, we stuck with high to keep things a bit more balanced across the graphics cards to avoid any of the vendor specific settings being implemented. And of course the GTX 1080 takes the top of the charts by quite a long shot. What's really interesting here is how poorly the Fury and the Nano, the um, Fiji based GPUs performed on here <laughs> quite adversely the 480 did extremely well and even the 470 did quite well and the 480 up against the 1060 was quite impressive being that this is a, a very heavily based Nvidia title the 480 did fairly well here even in 1% 0.1% lows if you click on the link to the article below you'll be able to see those numbers as well a bit more in depth now jumping up to 1440p we see the 1080 maintaining quite the lead out ahead of everything else and uh, the 980 is actually doing quite well but we do see here where the Nano and the Fury X make up a bit of ground once you start raising the resolution and those stream processors come into play but even at this resolution the 480 and the 1060 are neck and neck even in the 0.1 and 1% lows again those will be found in the article but that's that's quite impressive for a game like this especially on day one and I guess it really does come in handy that it's based off the frostbite engine which AMD is quite familiar with Moving up to the Big Daddy, the 4K numbers here. The GTX 1080 is able to pull 41 FPS average. The 980 Ti pulls in 35. And the Fury X barely broke 30, which was quite nice. But thanks to the throttling, the Nano fell below down to 26, right on par with the GTX 980, which is quite common in most games where those two perform almost identically. Um, so that's been the performance of the game so far. We're not getting into the topics of glitches and facial animations because quite frankly, the game hasn't, I've, I've found neither one to be distracting for my experience. But then again, I'm not a major Mass Effect follower. This just happened to be a game I look, look like I very much wanted to play after being burned by the likes of uh, No Man's Sky and then the fact that I'd at this point I'm beginning to question whether we're ever going to actually see a full-fledged release of Star Citizen. I do have my copy and I will be waiting for it if that game ever does decide to rear its head as a final product. But if you found this video informative or entertaining feel free to like and subscribe. This has been Keith with WCCF Tech TV and we will catch you in the next video.